to me, food justice is about everyone of every race, whether you're black, white, Puerto Rican, or anything else, um, you have the same access to healthy food. One of the responses we frequently get from city planners or even grocery store operators is that there was no need, that there's no um, profit for them to have a grocery store in our community, which we all know doesn't make sense. We eat just like everyone else does, so we've got to buy groceries from somewhere. What are their priorities in terms of the type of food that goes in the grocery store? We asked members of the community to save their grocery receipts and turn them into us. We received thousands of grocery receipts in a month's time. At the end of the campaign, we did a press conference to announce how many receipts we had gathered, how much people were spending. So that spurred us to do a Wish You Were Here campaign, which we're in the middle of now. So what we have here are postcards that we're going to be sending out to the four grocery stores that you all help to identify as your top choices. I am one of the 35,000 proud residents of Mason Square. My neighborhood needs a full-line grocery store. If you build it, we will come. We are going to send 2,000 of these out to these four grocery stores at the same time. We have identified a prime location for a grocery store. We've got city planners looking at putting together a financial package that would be attractive to an operator. We have the attention of the business community, which we did not have five years ago. I, I really can't believe that we're actually trying to negotiate some deals now. I mean, it's right. incredible that we've put, you know, brought this as far as we have and, and that we, we could see ground break. Right. In our lifetime. In our lifetime. <laughs> there are a number of things that we're doing along the way while we continue to work towards building the grocery store. Gardening the Community is a youth-based urban agriculture program with a focus on sustainability and youth development. We need to dig a trench right here. We've been uh, doing extensive fashion. curriculum around food equity, uh, racial justice issues. We kind of educate them on what sustainable living is, food justice is, how to grow your food, where your food comes from when you're not growing it, and how much nutrition value you're losing when you're purchasing a tomato that traveled all the way from California to Massachusetts. Just like that. Nice and secure. You got it? A lot of people of color don't have a very positive history looking back with agriculture. They have these very dreary and you know, very not so positive images of people working in the field and things of that nature for free for hundreds of years. And so, you know, trying to change that, you know, and, and put a positive spin on what is potentially available for them is what we're striving to do. The youth, they actually run a lot of the workshops and they have discussions around why things are the way they are. Why is it that we don't have access to food in this community? Why is it that we don't have a grocery store? This is the kind of space that we'd like to utilize. What I could potentially see here would be a number of greenhouses or hoop houses, fruit trees going on here. There was an apartment building here. It was an abandoned building. Uh, the community decided to make a community garden here. So they pretty much were on this land for about a good eight to 10 years. And then the city came and took this area away without really giving much warning. This is, you know, one of the areas that we would like to have uh, returned to us if possible. The soil here has been kind of worked for a number of years, so it's really good soil. The Gardening of the Community has been working a really long time to get a gardening ordinance passed, which would allow us to have gardens throughout the community that don't get taken away. And I'm happy to say that that ordinance was just recently passed. Over time, I've, I've developed a real, you know, kind of more of a love and understanding of, of growing food. Every season is different. It's like every day is pretty much something new, something to learn about. When I was 13 years old, I was a junk fanatic. I love anything that has sugar in it. Like my family would drink Kool-Aid every night at home. Now how my family eats is tons of veggies and fruits every day. My mom makes a green smoothie every day. 
there's no reason why there shouldn't be a grocery store in our neighborhood. So that Everything we do is, is done through a lens of equity. And when we work with the community, it's about building capacity. But are we leaving the residents stronger so that they can become advocates for their own needs?